Hey, what's going on, Adalo community? This is Mario Flawless, the uh, problem solver, an Adalo expert here at the Adalo forum. And today's request, we're just gonna jump right in. We're gonna create a continuous audio player. All right, so today's request comes from Regis. Regis is working on an audio app for a client and he's looking to create a continuous audio player. So I went ahead and made a quick one, just a really, really simple, straightforward, uh, continuous audio player, and I'll show you how it works. All right, so this is, this is the app that I created so far for it. It's the most basic thing you've ever seen. We've got four screens. We've got a login home, a song loader previous, and a song loader next. All right, and we have a couple of other things in here, and I'll, I'll, I'll break down exactly how this all works. Okay, so the login, nothing happens here. Home screen is where most of it happens, and these are going to be the song detectors. Okay, so starting with the database. We have two collections. We have users and songs. In the users collection, I have not added any additional parameters except for a many-to-many -many relationship with the songs, and we label this favorite songs. In the songs, we have all of these parameters here. We have a song ID number, a name, the song file, which is a file a parameter, image, and the many-to-many -many relationship with the users. So we've got the favorite users and the user's favorite songs. So looking at the home screen, we have three things. We have a song selection input, a list, and an app bar. Now, the app bar, uh, this will, I don't really, I'm not doing this yet. Okay, we're just gonna, I'm gonna just make, showing you how to create the continuous audio player. So we have a song selection input which is a number, we can set this uh, the default value to logged in user songs, favorite song ID minimum. That'll grab the user's uh, song, the, the first one on the, on the list. So I have the songs set sequentially, one through five. I have five songs in here, one, two, three, four, five. You wanna make sure none of these numbers overlap each other or else it'll get a little confusing. You just wanna keep them in order, okay? So. This number will be the minimum song ID. Now, if you want to make it really easy, one is the minimum here. Okay. I just put it there. So this is going to be, we have an audio player within a list. So it, this is a list, a custom list of songs. And this is going to be all songs where the song ID is equal to the song selection input. So anytime there's a number in here, it will grab that song number and then play it. Okay, so this we wanna make sure we have songs, all songs, song ID is equal to song selection input. You can sort it from low to high, but make sure you put a maximum number of items to one. You only want one audio player on the screen. All right, so for the components, all we have in here is a group and an audio player. The group is for the like button or for the favorite buttons. So we're, we're going to go into the audio player first and show you how to configure that. So since this audio player is within a songs list, you can set the parameters like this. So we've got current song, song, song URL. So the current song, song URL. And then the song title is the current song, song name. I don't have a subtitle here, but you can add one there if you want to set it to autoplay and uh, continue playing on other screens, I guess. So this this link will link to the song loader next screen because the song is ending, it's going to the next song. And enable left and right buttons, switch them to previous and next, and link to the song loader previous for the previous button and song loader next for the next button. Now the group that's within this list. Remember, this is still nested within the list. We have a rectangle, which is behind both icons. Icon 1 and Icon 2. Icon 1 is this top one, that's the empty border, and this one's the filled one. So this rectangle behind it, I have it set with no background, no border, no rounding, no shadow, 
It's just a placeholder hold to hold these two in place while we work on their visibility settings. So, for the first icon, we set it to sometimes visible if current song's favorite users does not contain logged in user. So if they did not like this, it's gonna show them this one with the border. When they click it, it will update the current song to add the favorite, or add the logged in user to the favorite users list. When they click on this second icon, it will remove them from the list. So we wanna have this visible when the current song does contain the logged in users. So when they do like it, they see this filled in blue heart. When they click it, it removes them from the list and displays this one again. All right, so that's it for the home screen. Now, this is a list of all songs. Now, he had asked, uh, Regis asked if we can filter it by favorites. All you have to do is switch this filter to from all songs to logged in songs. Now, logged in user songs favorited. So the favorite songs right there. That's it. Real easy. That's how you set it to filter only the favorite songs. But now, let me show you how to configure the, the, the song loaders for the continuous play, because that's the, that's the tricky part. Remember, the previous button goes to the previous page. When the song finishes playing, it goes to the uh, next page. And when they click the next button, it also goes to the next page. So on this previous loader, uh, song loader previous page, you'll see we have two lists and a Lottie file. The Lottie file is just this animation just to make it look pretty, okay? Nothing, nothing special about the Lottie file. You can use a loader GIF image or just a picture, or you could just put text in here that says loading. Really doesn't matter. This is just to make it look pretty. The two lists. So we have, this first list is a list that, uh, well, I'm, I'm not gonna touch this just yet. Hang on. Well, let me show you. This is a list of songs. So if they click the previous button, this is a list of all songs where the song ID is greater than the song ID. So this is actually gonna grab, so if they're on song number one, this is gonna grab song two, three, four, five. It grabs all of them, but we wanna sort it from high to low with a maximum of one. So what this is now gonna do is when they click the previous button, if they're on song number one, we wanna have this go to song number five. So we've gotta set this to sometimes visible where all songs count, or if, if you're filtering for logged in users, we'll, we'll put logged in users favorite songs count, where song ID is less than current song song ID. Because when we clicked that previous button, it sent that current song that it was playing to the previous page. So if you look at the previous here, we see available data, we have current song, which is that song that was already playing, okay? So if the song number is greater than it, we're gonna show it, but if the count is zero, if there is no songs that are less than that, it's gonna show this list of songs from high to low where it's gonna set the countdown within the list is going to have a finished action of change input value and back. So this change input value is going to switch this song selection input field to the current song ID. And it would be the top one, current songs, ID since it's nested within another list. So we, this is from the previous page and this is from the list that we created. Okay, so we're gonna put current song, song ID here. And when it goes back, it's now gonna have the new song or the, 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 the previous song loaded in here. Now remember, this is gonna load song number five. This is only gonna be here if the count is equal to zero. Remember, if, there, if there's no songs before one, it's gonna load this one. But since there will be uh, like if they're on song number two, three, four, or five, there will be a song below that. So we create the second countdown that's visible if the count is not equal to zero. If all songs count song ID is less than current song ID is not equal to zero, we are gonna display this next list of songs that are less than the current song ID. So like I said, if we're on song number three, we wanna load song number two. Okay, so we're gonna sort this from high to low because we don't want it to go from three to one to two three to four to five, we want to go to three, two, one, and then back to five. So we sort it from high to low with a maximum of one. And so within the component, we have the countdown, set it to two seconds, action with a change input value to the current song ID on the song selection on the home screen, and a link back. That's gonna be how the previous button works. The next button works the exact same way, except all of the details are reversed. So. When someone clicks the next button or the song ends and we want we send them here to this page which also has a Lottie file, which is the image, and two lists. 
So this one here is if the count is equal to zero. So if they reach the last song on the list and there are no songs greater than with an ID greater than the current song, so if it equals zero, it will display this list of all songs that are less than the song ID and it will sort them from low to high. So it'll kick it back from, so it'll go from five to one. And we only set it to one. Within the component, the countdown, same thing. Two seconds, action. We change the input value of the song selection input on the home screen to the current song, song ID number. And then we send them back. Now in the situation where there is a, a, another track coming up next and it doesn't have to go all the way and loop back around, we have the second countdown timer, which is visible if the songs count where the song ID is greater than the current song song ID is not equal to zero. All right, so this will say, all right, there is no, there is one or two or three songs still going. So we'll load this next list of songs, which is all songs where the song ID is greater than the current song ID. So this will load. If we're on song number three, this will display song number four. So we have we have it sorted from low to high. So if it goes four, then it'll go five, then then it'll go back to this other countdown. So remember, set it to maximum number of items to one. Components, go to your countdown, go to your actions, change the input on the home screen to the current song song ID and link back. Okay, so for this example, I have five songs. So I have one, two, three, four, five. They're all in order. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so we're here on, on track number one. So let's test the autoplay first to make sure it goes to track number two. Beautiful. And you can see I already favorited that one. I just unfavorited it. Now I should go to track number three. Beautiful. The autoplay works. Let's see if previous works. So we're on track number three. I should go back to number two. Beautiful. And this should go to number one. Yeah. And this should loop back around to song number five. Woo! I think we're on a roll, baby. Let's, let's just make sure that this finishes and goes back to song number one since the playlist is complete. And there it is, folks. You got your continuous audio player. All right, so remember, uh, it's real easy to do just to switch it into your favorites songs just by setting this. Instead of songs, all songs, you switch this to logged in user songs. And then also, if you do it this with your favorite songs, you want to make sure that you switch all of these lists. So all four of these lists on the countdowns, you want to set that from all songs to logged in user songs, favorited users. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or visit our website at www.templar.design.